Hey, I am Tammy and I do math for coffee these days, but I used to do math for my job. I'm a retired teacher. So I thought in order to help you get ready for your first geometry exam, I'd pull up one of my exams, show you all the questions and give you a chance to do them. And then we'll go through and solve each one. Now you're going to see each question on the screen for five seconds. You'll need to pause so you can do it and then start the video again. Are you ready? Let's go. Okay, let's get into these problems. For this one, we are supposed to find the length of TS. When you see something like this, it's the segment measure, which means we have to solve for X. We know that the entire length here is X plus 27. <coughs> so X plus 27 must equal these two added together, 2x plus 28 plus 10. That's the end of the geometry. Now we're going to do some algebra. I'm going to combine like terms right here. x plus 27 equals 2x plus 38. When you have the equal sign here, you don't really combine like terms. You're trying to cancel terms off of both sides. And there's a 2x here and a 1x there. So I am going to subtract x. So that cancels. We are left with 27 equals 2x minus 1x is just 1x plus 38. And now we're going to subtract 38 from both sides. 27 minus 38 is a negative 11, and that equals x. This isn't really the segment. This is the x. They asked us to find the length of segment TS. So we substitute it back in. We get 2 times negative 11 plus 28 negative 22 plus 28, that's going to be a 6. Just this chunk right here is 6 units long. That's all we were supposed to find, but it, that means the entire thing is 16. So I'm going to do a quick double check so we know that this is supposed to equal 16. This was extra work I did just as a check. If this were an exam, I would probably do that if I had time. Choose the wrong name for the given angle. This is like a knowledge question, a notation question, so we're going to eliminate the wrong answers. Can you call this angle M? It's one of the notation rules that we have in geometry. If it's, there's not a lot of confusion, you can actually just use the vertex. So this one is OK. Since we're looking for the wrong name and this one's OK, that's not a choice. B. The number 4 here is another way of notating the angle. NML. The notation for an angle, you have to have the vertex in the middle. So any of these choices that have N and L but M in the middle in between them is OK. So this one can't be an answer because it's correct. And this one can't be an answer because it's the same thing just going the other way. So the correct answer was D. Okay, for this one, there's no math to do. It's a definition. Do you remember what the words acute, obtuse, or straight angle mean? And this is 180 degrees. 180 degree angle is a straight line. So this one is a straight angle. Oh, cool. Now we get to do some math. This is one of those problems that some people just kind of draw a blank on because there's a lot going on. What I suggest you do is you just start filling in the diagram with information until you get an idea of what it is you're supposed to do. So we're talking about the measure of angle VUL, this angle right here. And they're telling me that 
that measure is this algebraic expression 7x minus 6. So I'm just going to write it there. And then it's telling me that the measure of angle VUT, well VUT is the whole darn thing. Both of these angles added together is 160. So I'm going to write that out here. The measure of angle LUT is this guy right there, and it is 6 plus 3x. 13x. We've got everything where it's supposed to be, and now we need to figure out how to do this. Segment addition postulate says if you add two little ones together, you'll get a bigger one. And we know that the answer for the bigger one is 160. So let's just add the two little ones together. We've got 6 plus 13x, 7x minus 6. If we add those two together, it is supposed to equal this 160 degrees. These two little ones put together are going to equal the whole thing. So now we have an algebra problem. On this side, we need to combine like terms. But if you look at this, there's something interesting here. Here's a positive 6 and here is a negative 6 and they are on the same side of the equal sign. So they cancel each other out. So add 13x and 7x, that's 20x's. That equals 160 degrees. So this problem got really easy, really fast. Now we're going to divide both sides by 20. x equals, well, it's like 16 divided by 2. So x equals 8. And that is all they asked us to do. It said find x, so we are done. All right, this is another question where it is only a definition question. You don't have any math here to do. They want to know the relationship between these two angles. How are they related? Complementary means they add up to 90 degrees. I don't know that. It could, but I don't see that. Linear pair means when you add them together, you get a straight line. Well, that's not true. They're not together on the same line. They're across from each other. Adjacent means they are right next to each other, which they are clearly not adjacent. This is kind of an unknown. This is pretty much not true, so it's vertical. Their vertical angles are right across from each other, and whenever you see an X kind of situation or a bow tie kind of situation, those are vertical angles. All right, got a little bit of math to do on this one. You're supposed to find the measure of angle B, and that we're testing to see if you know what this means. That means 90 degrees. All right, so if this is 28 degrees, this is the rest of it. These two are complementary. They add up to 90 degrees. So subtract 28 from 90 degrees. That's your answer. All right, a little bit more math. You have to know how these two are related to each other. That is called a linear pair. You don't need to identify this language in this problem. You just need to know it. And that means these add up to 180. So 6x plus 84 equals 180 degrees. Subtract 84 from both sides, and then we're going to divide by 6. x equals, boom, 16. And that's all we were asked to do. All right, find x again. You know you're not supposed to just point to it, right? <laughs> so now you need to figure out how you're supposed to set these up. And again, the, the, the algebra isn't all that complicated in a problem like this. We're testing to see if you understand the relationship. We just did a problem like that. These are vertical angles, like the bow tie thing, the x thing. So that means they're going to be equal to each other. 4x plus 3 equals 83. They're the same size, and that makes sense. It's kind of like opening a scissor. So now subtract 3 from both sides. 4x equals 80. Divide both sides by 4. x equals 20. And we are out of that problem. Number nine, segment AB has midpoint M. If A has coordinates negative four, zero, and M has coordinates zero, one, find the coordinates of the other endpoint. This is one of those questions that has a high probability of freezing up your brain because it just seems like way too complicated. This is one of those problems that you do need to practice. I'm going to make a video for this. If I have already made it, I'll put a little link up above. It should be there right now. But for this problem, I'm going to do it two ways, and you decide which way makes the most sense. 
benefits to you and maybe you like them both. When I first teach this to people, I encourage them to actually graph those two points so you can see what it is that you are looking at. A, B is the segment, so one of the points is A, but we don't know what the other end point is. B, we don't know what that is. That's what we're supposed to find. But they did tell us that the midpoint is M and that has coordinates of 0, 1. So if you plot those two points and then drew a line, we're supposed to figure out where B is supposed to land. M is supposed to be a midpoint, so that means each side is supposed to be the same length. So if I put B there, this piece that goes from A to M seems longer than from M to B, so intuitively I think that's not the right spot. There is a better way than just guessing where to put it, although if I were guessing I'd think it's somewhere here. Once you have it graphed like this, you don't really need to know. We're going to count boxes using slope to find it. So to get from A to M, I need to go up one and over one, two, three, four. Don't be jelly. This is called galaxy. Isn't that pretty ink? <laughs> All right, then in order to find the next one, we have to do the exact same thing. And even though we're not sure exactly where we're going to land, we know that we have to go up one box and over four. One, two, three, four. So that right there is where B should be. Now you're going to be drawing this. You're not going to be using a computer to just kind of slide it over there. But now we need to come up with the coordinates for that. Well, that is the X coordinate is one, two, three, four, and the Y coordinate is two. So we know the answer for the other endpoint is four, two. Now there's a different way to do that, and that would be using the midpoint formula, but not exactly. I'm going to explain what I mean here. And your teacher may want you to use the midpoint formula. So the midpoint formula from algebra says that in order to find the midpoint, you take your two x's from the endpoints and you add them together and you divide by two. Well, when you want to find the average of two numbers, that's what you do. You add them together and divide by two. So the x coordinate of the midpoint is actually the average of these two. The other part of that formula is to do the same thing with the y coordinates. You take the two different y coordinates, you add them together, and you divide by two. This is the midpoint formula. The x coordinates, when added together and divided by two, are supposed to equal that zero. So I'm going to just set that up. I know that the answer is supposed to be that zero. My first x coordinate is negative four. My other x coordinate, I don't know, so I'm just going to put an x, and I know you're supposed to divide by two. So I'm going to solve this. Okay, to solve an equation like this, where you have an x in a numerator and a number in the denominator, you multiply both sides by that denominator because that will cancel the denominator on this side. 2 times 0 is still 0, negative 4 plus x. This just cancels and the numerator drops down. Add 4 to both sides, 4 equals x. So I know that this number right here has to be 4. We actually already know the answer because we just did it with the graph paper, but I'm showing you a different way to do it, especially if your teacher wants you to do it like this. All right, now to find the y, you got to use the same logic. We know that the y answer is 1, so 1 must equal the average of the two y coordinates, and that would have been 0 plus this unknown y that we're going to be looking for divided by 2. Use the same technique to get rid of that fraction. You're going to multiply both sides by 2. That cancels the denominator on that side, and we now have 2 equals 0 plus y. 0 plus y is just y, so we know that the y coordinate is 2. And that's how you get the same answer that we got before using the graph paper. Segment PE is an angle bisector. I'm stopping after I read that one because the rest of the algebra I understand can be a little bit brain freezing, but what does it mean to be an angle bisector? And then I can go into the diagram and change it. Well, bisector, this PE being a bisector, means it's cutting this angle exactly in half, which means both sides are going to be congruent. So angle one and angle two are actually the same size. This means the measure of angle 2, and it says that that equals the 2 plus 5x. So I'm just going to write that in here. Instead of get telling me how big the angle is, it's giving me algebra. And the measure of angle 1 is 4x plus 7. And because they told me that was a bisector, we know that these two things are actually equal to each other. So 2 plus 5x and 4x 
plus 7 r equal. That's the end of the geometry. Now we're going to be doing algebra. The 4x and the 5x are on opposite sides of the equation, so you don't try to combine them. We need to cancel, and I like to always cancel the smaller one. The 2 just comes down. 5x minus 4x is a positive 1x and 4x minus 4x cancels, and the 7 just comes straight down. Now we subtract 2 from both sides. x equals 5. And we were only asked to find that, so that's your final answer. Sometimes they want you to plug the x back in. you got to watch for that in geometry. Okay, find the area of a triangle. You may have a formula sheet, or you may be expected to just know this. The area formula for a triangle is area equals one half base times height. The reason this one is tricky is because that triangle is actually sitting on a side. The height is the perpendicular distance from the tippy top to the bottom, and perpendicular means this right angle right here. That's the height of the triangle. What you could do with your paper that I'm going to do with this diagram is I'm going to put it in the right orientation for how a lot of us learned the formula, even though that puts all my numbers upside down. This 9 right here, it's not a base or a height. It's a slanted side. That is not the height of the triangle. It Think of it like this. If you wanted to to find out how tall you were, you don't lean backwards against the wall. You usually go flat up right to the wall and stand very, very straight. That's your height. So the area of this triangle is going to be one half times the base. Well, the base is the perpendicular to the height, so that is the 12, and the height is 7.3. One half of 12 is 6, so you need to take 6 times 7.3. And our answer is 43.8. We need to put some units on here. When you are working with area, area is always square feet, square inches, square miles. And so this one is in inches, so it is square inches. All right, another area problem. Find the area of the circle. Use 3.14 for pi. Round your answer to the nearest tenth. Okay, so we need to get a formula. The formula for area of a circle, pi r squared. If you don't have a formula sheet and you're expected to memorize it, there it is. Now they're telling us they want to use 3.14 for pi. If you if you have that, do that because it's to make sure that everybody comes up with the right answer. If some people are using 3.14 and other people are using a pi key on their calculator, the answers can be different. So we know that that's 3.14. Well, now we got to find the radius. The line going all the way across like this in the diagram means that that is a diameter. The radius is just from the center to the edge. So it's half of 18, so that is 9 squared. So we need to take 3.14 times 9 times 9, which is 81. 254.34. This problem asked us to round our answer to the nearest tenth. That is one decimal place. So you look at the three. If this four is, is not going to be big enough, it has to be a five or greater to bump this up. So our answer is 254.4 <laughs> miles squared. All right, we have a vocabulary matching question. Match the description with the correct notation. So the description they're telling us is line PQ. Not line segment, but line. Well, this notation is a ray when you only have one arrow. So this is a, this is not correct. There is another ray. Okay, so now you have to remember which one of these three in the middle have the right notation for a line. This is a line segment. When there's no arrows, that's a segment, so that's not an answer. And when there is no notation above the letters at all, this is the measurement how long it is. That's not even for a line. That's a measure of a segment. You can't take the measure of a line. So our correct answer is D. All right, we're doing it again. The measure of segment PQ, well, we just talked about that, so that's this one, B. How did you do? If you're willing to share, please drop your score in the comments and tell me which ones were super easy or which ones were super hard, and if you, especially the hard ones where you'd like me to do another video on them. And click into this video next.